May the sound of the bell remind us that the Spirit of God is within us and among us. We are blessed by you who have come to worship in person today and by you who join us online. We are an affirming congregation and work for this to be a safe and fully inclusive space for all. All are welcome here. Let us acknowledge the history of this land. Before we gathered here for worship, the life and spirituality of the Atikamekshing Ashinaabik preceded us. We worship on their traditional territory with gratitude, and we will seek to walk in faithfulness and reconciliation. This morning, members of our congregation will be leading the worship service, and I express my thanks to them for their participation. The service ends with the choral response and the credits on the screen. During the children's time, we would invite children who are watching and have pets to have their pet close for our blessing of the animals. If you do not have a pet, we invite you to find a favorite animal stuffy to represent God's creatures, wild and tamed, bird or animal. Please join in the responses for our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We call to mind the miracle of life and the miracles in life, to live and love, to taste and touch, to serve and be served. It is a gift to live this day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. On this autumn day, by the power of your Holy Spirit, O God of life, may we open our hearts to wisdom and beauty in your world, in your word, and in the companionship of others. We come as we are, trusting that you hold us in our humanity, fragile and strong, broken and complete, and that you guide us and transform us in your love. May we rest in your grace as we worship together. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is All Things Bright and Beautiful, and it's found in Voices United hymnal number 291.
Good morning, St. Peter's friends. It's nice to see you, and it's nice to see you online as well. This is the day that's really special. We're going to bless the animals. So if you have a pet and you're watching online, go get that cat that you have such trouble keeping away from the computer. Or whatever pet you have, bring them along so they can be with you um, as we bless the animals. And if you're here in the service or watching online, I'm actually going to ask you to do something that's not usually allowed. Get your phone or your device out. I bet you have a picture of an animal that you love on that phone. Go ahead, pull it out, scroll to that picture, and keep your favorite animal in mind. Maybe you don't have a pet. Maybe you have a stuffy, though. This is my new pig. Do you like her? I just knit her, and I love her little curly tail. I've been making lots of knitted stuffies lately. Some of them are getting tucked away for surprises for later. But um, I decided to bring Ruthie, the pig, with me today. I really like animals. You know, I grew up around animals. I had two dogs when I was a kid that were really important to me. First, I had a dog named Penny. Penny was a border collie. Penny walked with me out to the end of the lane every day to catch the bus. And then she'd turn around and go right back. After Penny, I had Goldie. So I've had lots of animals in my life that I really love. I don't have any pets in my house right now, but one of my kids has a pet named Abby. She's a favorite cat. I have a little friend who has a very small dog. Guess what? That dog's called Tiny. That's pretty appropriate. I just saw Tiny the other day, and Tiny was going for a spa day. Lucky dog. I said, I want a spa day. But anyway, it was Tiny's day at the spa, not mine. So I wonder what animals you get excited about. Your pet? Maybe some animals that you see outside? Boy, the animals are busy outside at this time of the year, aren't they? So many of them running around. I mean, there have been reports of bears on my street. I haven't seen one yet. But the little animals are so busy. The squirrels, the chipmunks. Chipmunks are actually not my favorite animal. I've been frustrated by chipmunks a lot. You know why? Because I have a garden. And all through the summer, the chipmunks were coming. They loved my tomatoes. They'd take one bite out of each tomato. I got very frustrated. So I was telling my friend how frustrated I was with the chipmunks. And her little girl, my little friend Sophie, was listening. Sophie said, you know, Linda, maybe what you should do is just put some tomatoes out and share. And then the chipmunks would have lots, and you'd have lots. I said, you know, Sophie, no. They don't know how to share. They just take bites out of everything. I'm very frustrated. I wish they weren't even here. And Sophie said to me, I love chipmunks, Linda. Why don't you bring them to me? I thought, how am I going to bring chipmunks to you? I asked her mom, and her mom said, it would be OK if I could figure out a way to get the chipmunks from my house to Sophie's. And Sophie doesn't live near me. She lives quite a few blocks away. So we had a bright idea. And I want to show you what we did. I borrowed something from my friends Susan and Glenn. And they let me borrow this. Now, you might think, whoa, a trap? That doesn't seem very kind. But you know what? I want you to know that this is a trap that doesn't hurt the chipmunks at all. So inside, right in here, I'll, we would put some very tasty peanut butter as a treat for the chipmunks. And then we would set the trap. And the chipmunks would come. They would go, oh, smells like peanuts. And they'd run inside, and the trap would close. And then I would call Sophie's mom. Hey, Sophie's mom. I have, a, I have a gift for Sophie. <laughs> and then I would get in my car. I drove to Sophie's house. I said, Sophie, look what I have for you. Sophie was such a good friend to the chipmunks. OK, first I brought her a, a chipmunk. She called it BB. 
About uh, the next day, I caught another one. I took it over, she called it Cece. You'll probably already guess what she called the third one, Dee Dee. But anyway, with every chipmunk I brought to Sophie's house, she had prepared a little feast out in her backyard. She put out some strawberries and some nuts. She was very welcoming to the chipmunks. And I thought, okay, chipmunks, you know what? You're better off with Sophie than you are with me. She wants to bless you and give you treats. Well, you know, animals are a really important part of our world, aren't they? Whether they're the wild ones that run around outside or the ones that we welcome into our homes as pets or the ones we snuggle with when we want to get cozy. October is a really special month. I love October. I love the colors. I love the pumpkins. I love Thanksgiving. I love Halloween. There's another special day in October, though, and it's called the Feast of St. Francis. Usually we celebrate this early in October, but today we're celebrating it here. Um, and so Francis, the Feast of Francis, you might say, who is Francis? Well, Francis is a person who lived a really long time ago in Italy. I mean, a really long time ago, like 800 years ago. And the thing about Francis is that Francis loved the animals. And Francis taught people about Jesus. Francis taught people how Jesus lived very simply and loved everybody and wanted to work and make things fair in the world. Francis taught people how important it is that we try to do the things that Jesus taught and love the world the best way we can, including, especially for Francis, all the animals. Francis' favorite place to be was outside. Outside, in the forest, in the woods, in the wild places, I get that. I love being outside, and especially at this time of the year, don't you? Nice long walks, beautiful colors to see, lots of animals to observe. And Francis felt really close to God when he was outside, in creation. Francis felt so close to creation, he, even, he called the, the moon the sun. He said, they're, they're my brothers and sisters, and the animals are too. You know, that makes me think, wow, Francis, you sound to me like my indigenous friends. They talk about, they don't call the moon their brother or sister, they call the moon grandmother moon, right? And they talk about all the animals as the more than human beings that are with us in the world. So Francis gets remembered in the church every October the 4th. And lots of churches have a special time and a special way to remember him. And our way today is that we are going to bless the animals. So did you find a picture on your phone? Did you? Did you get your cat or your dog or your fish or your iguana near you at the computer here? There are so many different animals. You know, we could make our long, long list, right? We could go all the way through the, the alphabet. Anteater, bear, cat, dog, elephant, uh, hmm, F, what starts with F? Fox, uh, giraffe. We could keep going all the way through the whole alphabet. So get your picture there, get your pet with you, think about all the animals. And I know that kids love animals and big people do too. So some of us even send some of our offering money to places that help take care of pets that get lost. And that's a really good thing to do. Okay, are you ready? Get your pet or your picture of the pet. And um, if you don't have that, get a stuffy or think about your favorite wild creature. We're going to do the blessing prayer now. This is a repeat after me prayer. Creator of all things. We thank you for all the creatures of the earth. The elephant and the chicken. The rhinoceros and the camel. The moose and the turtle. The squirrel and the kangaroo. The birds and the fish. The dog, the cat, the chipmunk. 
for all of these are your beloved creatures. They praise you by being themselves. Bless them, we pray. And help us to love them, just as you love them. And to be good companions as we walk the earth together. Amen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The first scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 34, verses 1 to 8. Praise for deliverance from trouble. I will bless the Lord at all times. The Lord's praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt the Lord's name together. I sought the Lord, and the Lord answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to the Lord and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in the Lord. The second reading this morning is from Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. The healing of blind Bartimaeus. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Herein lies the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There is nothing better and nothing worse than a good miracle healing story. Most of us probably turn away with a cynical yawn or a stab of disappointment. The miracle of spontaneous healing is no more common now than it was in Jesus' day. Maybe these stories are included in the Bible because they were so rare back then as well. And even though his spiritual gifts sometimes manifested as extraordinary events, Jesus was very clear that he never wanted to be thought of or marketed as a faith healer or a fairy godmother. But that doesn't stop us, in our desperate moments, from wanting that miracle, from thinking that this kind of thing should be our story because we have faith. As followers of Jesus, we have come to think it should be as accessible to us as a box of cereal at the grocery store, and when it is not, 
We are confused and disappointed, and that's, what, that's one of the worst parts of a healing story in scripture. As anyone who has ordered a sofa, a dishwasher, or building supplies during a pandemic will tell you, things don't always turn out the way you think they should, or in the time frame you hope for, even for the most spiritual among us. So I'm not going to try to explain miracle healing this morning. That's above my pay grade. Though I will say that hip and knee replacements would have seemed like miracles to our grandparents. But if you have waited for the sofa and the building supplies to appear, you may have found that you could live with the old one, or you could improvise, or you may have found that you had everything you needed after all. It's the same with the healing story. There is more going on than the obvious, and that's what makes it wonderful. Bartimaeus, or the son of Timaeus, is a haunting figure still across two millennia. Though modern medicine sometimes helps people regain their sight, there are many who are vision impaired who would say that what they truly need is respect, safety, and inclusion by accommodations. If the son of Timaeus had that, this story might be very different. For there he is, outside the city wall, off the path, excluded from the economy with no means of making a living besides begging, and therefore no ability to have and sustain a family, and no way to independently be involved in the activities of civic and religious life. He has faith and intelligence. He knows who Jesus is. And he has obviously heard about some of the unusual things that have happened in his presence. But everyone around him tells him to be quiet. Do they think he doesn't deserve the mercy he asks for? Or is it their own guilt talking? They haven't helped to provide for him, and maybe they don't want Jesus to notice that. They know the gospel he preaches of love and compassion. The command to love one's neighbor, especially the disadvantaged, is one of the cornerstones of Jewish faith. The beggar by the road is their shame. When we read this story, most of the time, we see ourselves in Bartimaeus. But if we look closely, we can also see ourselves in that crowd. When have we, as good church people, seen accommodations, the building of a ramp, the renovation of a bathroom, the creation of large print resources, the cost of a system for hearing devices as an annoying problem, another thing to cajole people into, to fundraise for? As COVID has forced us to sharing worship over the internet, churches have come to understand that there have always been members of the congregation and others who were isolated, who could not safely come to a building to worship. It is a joy, or it should be, to do the things we need to do to include one another in the worship of God. And when we think of the people in our city who have no affordable place to live or have to choose between rent and food, do we just want them to go outside the city limits and be quiet? Whether it is affordable housing, meeting hunger needs, or live streaming worship, our calling is to love our neighbor, listen to the needs of those on the sidelines, and to respond. Compassion, respect, safety, inclusion. Maybe what this story is really about is how the community cares for its most vulnerable people. Maybe as we see Jesus make a difference in the man's life, we are reminded, as his followers, that this is our calling as well. Maybe true healing comes about when no one is left outside the walls calling for mercy. There's another part of the story that we can look at with fresh eyes. Jesus tells the man that his faith has made him whole or well. When people fail to get their miracle, they are often deeply troubled that they didn't have enough faith 
or the right kind to unlock the mysterious door to healing. Like I said, explaining miracles is above my pay grade, but maybe there is something else to see here. If you've been listening to interviews on CBC recently, a common thread has been expressed by several Indigenous people, especially those taken away from their families in the 60s and beyond. Many times, it has been said that when they reunited with their first communities, learned their sacred stories and ceremonies, connected with elders, language, and culture, they felt more whole, more complete, healed, even when not everything was tidy or perfect in their lives. In his book, Embers, Richard Wagamies said that just standing in the country of my people, I am most fully the creation that I am. In the country of my people, I am most fully the creation that I am. Perhaps the faith that made Bartimaeus most fully who he was was not a set of precepts, but the experience of an embracing love. That was way different than the isolating daily grind outside the city wall and the voices that told him to keep quiet. Maybe the faith that makes us well, makes us whole, is an experience living within the circle of the faith community, growing toward God as we learn our sacred stories, participate in our ceremonies, connect with the people who have walked this path with long faithfulness and sought to live Jesus' way, not perfectly, but lovingly. Bartimaeus did exactly that. He left the city wall and the cloak that protected him there to follow Jesus, to become part of the community that resonated for him, that that would offer him respect and love and a way to serve a community of prayer and friendship, learning and companionship, a community that felt like home for his walk with God. A community of faith that holds a place for you, embraces you with love and inclusion, even when you are ill or when your faith falls off a cliff. That's a place of sacred healing and hope. And for some of us, that's a miracle. We may not be able to explain the ins and outs of miracle stories, but we can let them teach us. Today we remember that we can be a people who listen to and work with our community's most vulnerable people. And we can be a spiritual anchor of delight and wholeness as we share study and worship together in Jesus' way. May we be strengthened by God's love. May we be encouraged by the living spirit. And as we walk in Jesus' way in faith and faithfulness, may we become whole. Amen.
of gratitude, we thank all of you who are so faithful with your offerings of time and money that keep our ministries alive and meaningful throughout the city, the region, the country, and the world. We are especially grateful for those who have learned new skills and help us to find new ways to be faithful. In the season of harvest, giver of life, we recognize the abundance that is upon this earth by your grace. We dedicate to you our offerings of time and money, of imagination and skill, of patience and love. May we always be faithful with our lives and our gifts. Amen. Prayers of the People Now, as we join our hearts and minds in prayer, let us remember that, whether we are at home or in this building, we are connected and our prayers emerge with strength. There are no boundaries for the Spirit. With confidence, let us pray. Loving God, we come into your presence as we are, with unique strengths and weaknesses, with our joys and our heaviness of heart. You know our fears and our grumpiness. You know our silliness and our regrets. And you blanket us with your love because that is who you are and you are nearer than breath and closer than we imagine. Being human, we do not comprehend that we are being loved so intensely. But there you are, healing and transforming us, guiding us in the healing and transformation of our community and the world. If we do not feel it or comprehend it, help us to remember it. Your love is where we abide. So may it flow through us also, so that we are an instrument of your peace, a community whose faith and faithfulness becomes an energy through your wholeness, through which your wholeness emerges. We give you those whose hearts are broken, whose lives are hard, whose days feel long and joyless. We pray for those who hurt, who are hurt and suffer those who feel lost and bear the load of sadness. We pray for the world that you have made and for which your son gave his teachings and his life. Grant us the strength to work for peace and the health of the planet. We pray for all those who have no one to pray for them. We pray for Winston, Michelle, Ando, Miranda, Jean, Chester, Sean, Diane, Barry, and Susan. We pray for ourselves. 
We trust that your love answers prayer all the time and draws us closer to strength and truth and hope. Help us where our faith falls short. And help us also to live in praise and gratitude for the freedom and the opportunities we enjoy. For the chance every day to offer your grace to family, friends, and strangers. Thank you for teaching us patience and kindness and hope for helping us grow. We take a moment of quiet to lift you, to lift to you the gratitude of our hearts. O living love, teach us your paths and help us to walk in your way. And now we offer the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our last hymn, Spirit, Open My Heart, is found in More Voices, number 79. Let us go in peace, rejoicing in the miracles, small and large, that weave their way through our lives. May the blessing of God infuse us with courage and love. May the blessing of the Christ call from us wisdom and hope. May the blessing of the Spirit enliven us to be a blessing to the world. Amen. Yeah.